stinks. Looks good though. I mean, for being a piece of crap and everything. Part of being successful in planning is to not be distracted by other ideas. We're just gonna fix it, drive it around a little bit, see how we like it, decide what we're gonna do with it, if we're gonna keep it, flip it, put a bigger motor in, whatever. But we're gonna fix it as is. Then we'll look at doing like body work, I think. Uh, yeah, so let's go. Step one is going to be to get it on our wheel stands, which we made in a previous video. If you haven't watched that video and you're curious on how to make these, it's a pretty decent one. It's got like 100,000 views actually, so that's my only semi-viral video that I have on YouTube currently. They're pretty tall, so this should let us be able to drop the transmission, which is going to come in handy. Doesn't look like there's many bolts holding it on. Looks like it's missing a couple already. Should probably pull the hood off too. This car's front suspension sagged so much that I actually had to take a couple layers off of the wheel stands. Took two off of that one, two off of this. Hopefully it doesn't compress enough that I can't get the trans out. That's the other good thing about these wheel stands. You can just unscrew a couple layers and use it for a lower vehicle. For all you people saying that it's dangerous, I'd trust these wheel stands more than I would a jack stand on that small little frame rail that's from 1965. Looks like it's doing a wheelie. That'd be pretty cool if it did wheelies, right? It'll never do wheelies. I'm not the kind of guy to build a drag car. At least I don't think. Who knows? Looks like the dude Nick did some burnouts in this thing. Let's take it off the jack. See how much it compresses. Alright, so the front is on blocks now. Wish it was a little bit higher, but I think that'll give us clearance. And then the rear is on jack stands. Might throw a jack underneath of that pumpkin too, just in case. It's like a secondary safety. Of course, the best way to do this would be to have a lift, but we don't have a lift. We're poor here because we keep buying project cars. Hey, I could have bought a lift with the money that I used on this car. Doesn't have that much wrong. There's just some wires hanging out of the quarter panel. That's normal, right? Let's climb under this death trap. So you can't see it right now, but I think I showed it in the previous video that the pressure plate has a crack in it. See the oil pan's missing a bunch of bolts. You got some mismatched bolts. Who knows, these might have tech screws. This does have a, a split header, so it actually has dual exhaust. You can see the dual exhaust going all the way down. That's kind of nifty, ain't it? Everything's covered in oil, which might be good for us. I guess we'll start with the drive shaft, take that out, and then take that Brace out and then unbolt the bell housing. We're gonna have to unbolt the starter too. Make sure you don't have a battery connected. Okay, uh, apparently my memory cord is corrupting or something, so uh, I loosened this, uh, took the U bolts, those U clamps or C clamps, whatever you wanna call them, off of the exhaust. This probably won't budge anyway, but came loose. I told a joke, the joke is gone, ruined the moment. And then we're gonna take this off. Look at this glass pack. This is a cherry bomb. It's probably bought from. Sabo Auto Parts in Essex or Pep Boys or something. When's the last time you saw a cherry bomb? And then it has a mismatched muffler over here. Not sure what that is, but I guess we'll take that one off too. There's no clamp on that one. I don't know if that's welded. It might just be hanging there for all I know. Anyway, we're gonna bust this loose. It's got a big ass gap. It probably wasn't even the right size. Well, you can see it's not the right size. So this side should come off pretty easy. If you ever get a nut stuck inside your socket, just screw it on a little bit, and then you can usually wiggle it off. And then take the nut off the rest of the way by hand. Like that, see? Something simple. Simple little tricks to help you out. That's what we're all about here. Helping each other out. We're all gonna be best friends. Look how much oil's on here. How's this car not caught on fire yet? The exhaust does not want to cooperate, so we're gonna solve all it. Then you want to get a wrench and loosen up these nuts here. On the back side of the clamp, and then, yeah, it should come right out. 
break right through that slip yoke thingy. And uh, so yeah, don't uh, don't be directly under the drive shaft when you do this, or you might hit yourself in the face. And this is gonna be a half inch. <sighs> If you buy an old busted pallet crap like this, make sure your tetanus shots are up to date. Unrelated, but look how bad this muffler is. I should just cut this whole thing out. I'll just start over. Sounds like there's something inside of it. Yeah, that thing is pretty bashed up. I don't know if you jumped this car or something. I really don't know. What have I got myself into? Before I forget, should have taken care of the linkage. Looks like there's a nice handy spot right here. We'll disconnect this. So the linkage will be there, but the shifter you know, it can stay in the car. Because that's the way it should be, obviously. Alright. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure we put our cotter pin back in there. So that's disconnected from the car now. I guess that's where the speedometer went speedometer cable. We're just gonna go ahead and drain the pan. We don't want to drink a bunch of ATF. That's automatic transmission fluid, not alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. I will drink some alcohol and maybe, eh, not tobacco. Tobacco is bad and you don't want to put firearms in your mouth either. So yeah, just, eh, it's a dumb joke, whatever. <laughs> All right, let's start getting the trans unbolted. Just looking at some of these bolts on the bell housing. Jesus. Uh, when you cut tie wraps, don't cut them. Twist them off with your linemans or some pliers. Then you don't make razor blades like these. God damn it. Okay, anyway, uh, looks like there's already a bolt missing in the back of the bell housing. I think we're gonna have to take the starter off and then we can start taking the bell housing bolts off. Damn starter's half the size of the motor. Look at this thing. This thing's huge. Cut these goddamn razor blades off. So what we're gonna do is put a jack underneath of this thing. We're gonna unbolt it from the motor first, and then there's that trans mount underneath still. We're gonna unbolt it from there last, because I, I think that's the better way. Oh, well, the bell housing bolt should be loose now, and it should just be the trans mount right here that's holding everything on. So I got a jack under here with some boards so it shouldn't fall down and crack and crush my skull. Just gonna go ahead and loosen all this up and then I think we should be able to yank it back this way and it should come out. If you're doing this kind of thing, I suggest having a friend help. You really don't wanna do this by yourself, but I don't have any friends. I don't have anybody to help me. <laughs> There's nobody that I want to bother. I don't want to bother somebody. Bothering people is rude. Somebody used a nut as a spacer at some point, so. And this part's been bastarded together too. What the fuck that was? Sand? This is a goddamn dune buggy at some point? Uh, what did I do when I bought this? Might be rock bottom for my car addiction. In hindsight, should just pull the whole motor and trans all one piece. There we go. Welcome to it, buddies. All right, let's pull this biatch out. Let's take a peek at what we got here. This is a Ford Shiftomatic. I guess it's considered a C4, I don't know. I don't know much about this trans. I haven't looked it up much because the original intentions were to just swap this thing out. You can see there's like a lot of dirt and sand. I don't know if the previous owner off-roaded this thing. Maybe it was a rally fighter. You can see I spilled a lot of trans fluid. We're gonna throw some kitty litter down because I do care about the environment. I don't wanna poison any stray cats or turtles or frogs. I watched a lot of Captain Planet as a child and I really care about the planet now. My powers combine. Captain 
fuck up stuff. This camera is getting so dirty. There's a lot of sand underneath of this car now. I'm gonna put some kitty litter down, let this stuff dry overnight, clean it up so I can actually get under that motor. I really don't have a good record of finishing projects right now because I keep having more ideas. Who knows, maybe I won't even mess with this motor. I'm gonna sleep on this, see if I even wanna mess with it at this point or if I just wanna swap it. Uh, it's nice to get under the car and to see like things were solid, so that's cool. And uh, yeah, this is, this will be the end, the end of the episode. Sometimes it's fun just to sit in your project cars and pretend. Watch out crowds. Uh, oh no, I'm just trying to leave cars and coffee. Uh. But would it sound better like or would it sound better like or would it sound better like wouldn't it be cool if I had a 13B in here? Rotary swap 65? If only I could find one. I don't know. What are we doing? It's getting hot and I guess I'm starting to hallucinate because I'm in a 65 Mustang with no transmission making engine noises. I did have a couple beers too. So thank you for watching and uh, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll be under here messing with more stuff soon. Alright, uh, have a good day and I'll see you soon. Toodles. And please like, please subscribe, please. I work on these videos so hard. I just want somebody to watch them. So comment below if you watch most of my videos so I know who I can buy beers for when I see you in public and stuff. If I don't die under this car. Okay, bye.